today we're going to be working on solving polynomials. And so our big focus today is going to be on adding, subtracting, and multiplying them. So let's take a look at a couple problems. In the beginning, they're going to ask you to identify terms. Now, if I look at this list, when I have x to the fifth, x squared, y, and then a number, I want to see if there's any way to combine those. When these both obviously have z's, but that z to the fifth acts like a different variable than, the, than z to the second. So if I look at these, I'm unable to combine any of them, which means that there are going to be four separate terms here that we're going to be looking at. And the only one on this list that gives you that would be D. Okay, you can notice as you look at some of these, that minus that's in front of there makes that act like a negative. So this is the only one that has all the right signs as far as positive and negative as well. Now, when you go to do the indicated operations they give you, you're going to see add, subtract, and multiply for the vast majority of these. So if I look at these, the highest exponent I have is z squared, z, and then a number. And really, I'm just going to make this all about sorting. So I'm going to take this and sort it into the columns that it goes into. So 12z squared minus 4z, and then your positive 12. And if I go to this one, negative 16z, oh, excuse me, plus 16z, and negative 7. So if I go to put these together, this really has to be about combining each of the columns just like we would do when we were adding. So if I want to add this, these, that 12z to the second is the only z to the second. This is going to be 12z. And this will give me positive 5. And that's going to be your answer. These columns just help us get like terms together. Okay, here's another add. So if I look at this one, z squared is the highest out of all of these. So I'm going to set up that standard form of z squared being the highest, then z, and then my number. So 19z squared, a positive 6z, and minus 11, negative 11, negative 18z squared, minus 8z is going to make that act like a negative 8, and plus 4. And now I just have to total my columns. So 1z squared minus 2z minus 7. Now I will tell you most of the time you're going to see that written like this. They're going to drop that 1 in front of the z squared because the most simplified form, we already know there's a 1 that's assumed to be there. So we don't want to leave any extra stuff that we don't need to. Now let's take a look at multiplying. So if I see this negative outside of there, I do have to remember there's a negative 1 that's actually there. And then I have to distribute that to each one here. So negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times 4z is negative 4z. Really what ends up happening when you multiply or actually divide by negative 1 is that it changes the signs. Okay, same thing. Negative 1 is on the outside, and I'm going to distribute that negative 1 to all of these. So basically it changes the signs. So it'll become positive 7z minus 3y plus 4z. And that's going to be my final answer. Okay, now, when you see these negatives, we're going to remember, or excuse me, the subtraction, that there's kind of a negative that's happening. So if I have negative 1 that influences the stuff in this parentheses, it basically changes the sign. So that means that that 3p is going to become minus 3p. Instead of minus 2, it's going to become plus 2. And then I'm going to bring the rest down. Now it has to be about sorting because p and my number are all I have. 
So negative 9p, positive 7, minus 3p, positive 2. So negative 12p, plus 9. Now if you can do that from here and you don't need to do the sorting, I'm completely fine with that as long as I can see that this step is in there somewhere. have to see kind of the in-between. Okay, negative 1 influences these, so we change our signs. So a positive 5w squared plus 8w plus 6 Bring the first one down, and then it's got to be about sorting. So I'm sorting all my stuff out. And then I can total. So 8w squared, 15w, and 2. So that's going to be my final answer. Okay. Here's another one talks about distributive property. So I'm going to distribute or multiply this negative 3y times each thing. So negative 3y times 2y squared will be negative 6y to the third. Negative 3y times negative basically 1y is going to be positive 3y squared. Negative 3y times positive 4 is negative 12y. Now, this one they gave to you really because this is in the, kind of at the end instead of the beginning. Remember, I could literally move this in front, and it would look like the other problems that we were doing. So you have to distribute this to each number. So negative 4y squared times y to the 6, being negative 4y to the 8th, negative 4y squared times positive 7, so negative 28y squared. Okay, this is where using distributive property can be tricky. So I'm going to set this up like a multiplication problem. So if I had this problem, I would have no problem setting up a problem that looked like this. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing with this. Now notice the top one is, the top one right here has the most digits, this one has the most digits. So that will go on top, and we'll go through our multiplication. So 2y to the second, plus 3y minus 1, and 3y plus 5. So once I do this, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 5 times positive 3y is positive 15y. Positive 5 times 2y to the second will be 10y to the second. So there's my first one. When I go to this one, because it's one digit over, I'm going to add a zero of my placeholder, just like I would if I were traditionally multiplying. Then I start multiplying 3y by everything. So 3y times negative 1 is negative 3y. 3y times 3y is 9y squared. It happens to be positive. 3y times 2y to the second is going to be 6y to the third. And now I total. And this is my final answer. So if they say using this distributive property, feel free to kind of do this little shortcut method that we were doing here. You will also see them use FOIL. FOIL stands for multiplying the first ones, the outside ones, the inside ones, and the last ones. Now I would probably add ones there. 
but I actually prefer to use that shortcut method. And multiply 9 by everything and then 1y by everything. So 9y times 4 is 36. Or excuse me, 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 1y is 9y. I'm going to add my 0. 1y times 4 is 4y. 1y times 1y is 1y squared. And then total. Now when I look at this, realize that you will probably see it written like this on any test or quiz because that's its most reduced form. Dropping that one because I assume the one's there whether I write it or not. Let's try another one. Again, if you see this foil that's like distributive, that's that shortcut method, basically they want you to multiply those together. So I'm going to add ones. Negative 9 times 6 is negative 54. Negative 9 times 1y is negative 9y. Add a 0. 1y times 6 is 6y. 1y times 1y is 1y squared. And then total. Now remember, more than likely, you will see them drop that one at the very beginning. So that will be your, more, your most simplified version. Okay, now what's different about this one is there's an actual number in front of the y. I'm going to add a 1 there. Well, a number that's other than 1 is in this one. So set up our shortcut method just like we were using before. And start multiplying. So 2 times 5 would be 10. 2 times 2y is 4y. Add my 0. 1y times 5 is 5y. 1y times 2y is 2y squared. So if I go to total, it should look like this. Okay, now you're going to start to get more and more negative signs that are in there. Let's see if we can finish this one before the end of our time here. So I'm going to add a 1 there. So 2y minus 8. Oops, don't know what happened there. And then 1y minus 1. Negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8. Negative 1 times 2y is negative 2y. Add my 0. 1y times negative 8 is negative 8y. 1y times 2y is 2y squared. So my total 2y squared minus 10y plus 8.